Um, so actually, let me uh, first thank the organizers for not only giving me the opportunity to speak here, but also just in general for the, the conference and the Extreme Universe collaboration itself. I'm very grateful for that. Um, also, since um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm very happy that Azuma San mentioned the postulates of quantum mechanics at the beginning of his talk, because today I'll be talking a little bit about the fourth one, which says if you have an algebra A representing uh, Alice's system, and an algebra B representing Bob's system, if they're space-like separated, then postulate four accounts for how we should describe that system. But what if um, A and B are time-like separated and there's an evolution going from A to B? Is there a mathematical const construct that we can describe on the, on the algebra tensor product, the one in the future? So that's the context of my talk. And um, let me begin. And that's what I'm going to refer to as a quantum state over time. So let me begin with the classical situation. I won't be needing the board anymore. Thank you. Um, so the, in the classical situation, we have a stochastic map from some initial state space to a final one, which is described by conditional probabilities. And we also have an initial probability P on X. That's like our initial state. And with these two data, we can construct the joint probability which I'll denote by P star F, it's non-standard, um, on X tensor Y or X cross Y, whose value is given by the product of these two numbers. And what, is, what do these numbers mean? They describe the joint probability of first measuring X, then measuring Y, after the system has undergone the stochastic evolution. And I should point out that this probability is not the product of the initial probability times the final probability, because that would require that these two random variables are independent, which is not true because of this stochastic map F that connects the two. And what are we gonna, oh yeah, so I'm gonna call this a state over time and I'm gonna view this dynamical perspective like I just mentioned a few moments ago. And another point about this is, is that what is Bayes' rule from this perspective? Uh, what it actually says is that there exists a map in the, in the opposite direction, sort of going backwards in time, whose associated state over time, which is now something on y cross x, which is not exactly x cross y, because we're flipping the directionality of time here, but those two states over time are equal to each other after we apply that time swap. And if you go through the math, it literally reproduces standard Bayes rule, the probability of Y given X times the probability of X equals the probability of X given Y times the probability in Y. And the question is that I would like to address is what do we do in quantum mechanics when measurement influences the outcome of observations? And my perspective is that we should look at this mathematical way of viewing things and formalize it in the following way. So we're gonna represent our quantum systems by the algebras A and B. And for me, a quantum state over time is going to be a function that associates to each initial state on the algebra A together with some evolution from A to B, an element of A tensor B. And I'm gonna denote it by rho star E. And we're just gonna require two conditions for now, that when you partially trace out B, you get back your initial state, when you partially trace out A, you get your final state. And what you should think about is, this is an assignment sort of taking like time-like separated information to space-like separated information in a very rough intuitive sense. And we could require many other conditions besides just that partial trace condition. We could also require, for instance, a classical limit axiom, which is something that guarantees that um, when, the, when, when all of the matrices commute well enough, we reproduce Bayes' rule. And formally, I've written what that is here. If you take your density matrix rho and then associate it to every channel, you can construct the channel state, which was mentioned a few times in, in earlier talks. If you take the um, state over time associated to those two, then you get the product. And this, this is something that will reproduce um, classical Bayes' rule, for instance. And let me formalize that a little bit more. If you give me such a state over time function, initial state and evolution, again, I can construct this state over time, which is on A tensor B. 
And a Bayesian inverse is a map also that actually is going from B back down to A, such that a particular rule holds. Well, if you have a map from B to A and you have the final state, then you can construct its associated state over time, which is something on B tensor A. So swap the two pieces. Now you have two things on A tensor B. I'm gonna ask those two things to be equal. Seems a little bit odd, but um, I hope I've convinced you a little bit that it's not too crazy. And really um, to reiterate this point is that uh, this equation is what I'm going to call a quantum Bayes rule associated to your choice of a state over time function. And now let me motivate why, um, or at least justify this definition. So really this definition is the contribution of, of James Fullwood and I. So let's, let's look at an example. Um, imagine you take a uniform distribution, think the infinite temperature Gibbs state, and a bistochastic evolution, which takes that Gibbs state to the Gibbs state itself, then this is exactly what that physical system is modeling, and it's described um, as a CPTP map that's also unital. Now, if you give me any state over time function, whichever one you come up with, and it satisfies the classical limit axiom, and then you try to go through the calculation and compute what is its Bayesian inverse according to that definition, you'll find that it actually equals the Hilbert-Schmidt adjoint of the initial channel. Now, um, if you're familiar with CPTP maps, then the Hilbert-Schmidt dual is just, you have Krauss operators and then you take their daggers. Or if you're still not familiar with that, everybody should be familiar with, if you have a unitary evolution and you take its dagger, then that describes um, the evolution going backwards in time. And this is part of the reason why this Hilbert-Schmidt adjoint is often viewed as a time reversal of E, but let me just emphasize that this is a very special case of when that applies. There are many other examples of state over time functions that you can consider. In fact, the previous one was sort of like a class of examples. This is now a much, slightly more concrete examples. I won't write the formula for what this general family looks like, but it's parametrized by two numbers in the unit interval. And for certain values, you end up just taking the product of the density matrix with the channel state. And the reason I bring this up is because it's appeared a lot in some of my work, but it also appeared in many other places of interest. In particular, if we just take rho to be the, a pure state, so think of an initial pure state, and then a projection valued measure, so you have another orthonormal basis, phi x, you make a measurement, and that's described by actually a, a quantum channel, a, a, a quantum to classical channel in this case. You can think of post-selection too. And when you compute the associated state over time with respect to this definition, you actually get what's called the two-state of Resnick and Aharonov in their time symmetric formulation of quantum mechanics. And actually, this object also appeared very recently in the work of Nakata Takayana Giro in their context of holographic pseudoentropy. You should ignore the a factor here, but um, actually, if you compute the Bayesian inverse associated to this definition, then you get what's called the normalized two state in Resnick and Aharonov, or the transition matrix in uh, Nakata et al. Now, if we take another part in this whole family and we choose r equals a half and s is anything, something also interesting happens. We get this nice symmetric product where we take our density matrix, take its square root, put it on both sides of the channel state. And this actually reproduces what's called the leifer specken state over time. And leifer speckens uh, spent an entire paper devoted to the question that I was motivated by to answer in the first place. And they proposed this as their version of a state over time. But I'm just illustrating that this is just one of a many large class of possibilities. Interestingly, when you compute the Bayesian inverse of this state over time, you recover the Pets recovery map. And this Pets recovery map is sort of ubiquitous um, in, in quantum information, quantum thermodynamics, and more recently in the context of the black hole information paradox and entanglement wedge reconstruction. Another special case of interest is when you choose uh, another type of symmetric product. And in this case, the symmetric product is the Jordan product. So you're not taking any square roots. You're not doing anything odd about um, the density matrices or channels involved. You just take this Jordan product and 
uh, an interesting point to make is that this is a Hermitian if rho is is a, a density matrix and your channel is CPTP. Um, yeah. Sorry, there's a question. That's why I'm pausing. <laughs> but I am almost done. Uh, so so um, when you consider three of them, uh, so you know, there is some generalization of conditional expectation in this case. And yeah, is it true that the second one is only CP, CP and the others are not? Sorry, are you asking, is it true that from this family, the only one that's guaranteed to be CPTP for all input states and channels is this one? Yeah, I mean, the conditional expectation. Without any other conditions, yes. But if you include some covariance assumptions, then or symmetry assumptions, then some of the other ones will also become CPTP as well. Oh, I see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so actually, this is more or less, um, it leads to the end. One of the important things about the Jordan product is that it satisfies the most properties out of the ones that I did not list, unfortunately, but it satisfies a lot of them and it bypasses a no-go theorem um, that was interpreted as saying there are no good quantum states over time functions. But when we reinterpreted the theorem um, in our way, we found out that the Jordan product actually bypasses that. And it also provides a linear approximation to the leaf specken state over time. And uh, I also want to point out that many proposals for quantum Bayes rules in the literature are actually special cases of this definition, including uh, Christopher Fuchs's um, Bayesian updating Bayes rule. So um, part of the, you know, some things I didn't get a chance to explain, but state over fu time functions sort of aim to uncover some of the space-time uh, symmetry for open quantum system dynamics, and we're very curious about seeing how far uh, we can address this in particular information measures um, associated to these um, objects. So thank you for your time, and it, let me know if you have any questions, please. Thank you very much, and any questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Um, so is there any like entropic calculus for that? <laughs> or perhaps we can go to the pseudo, pseudo entropy. Yeah, this is actually- Like so, conditional entropies and so on. So maybe like a conditional pseudo entropy, a, condi a, a pseudo coherent information. Entropy. Yeah, so actually that was sort of, um, yeah, that's exactly what I meant by towards the end. Um, this is current joint work with, with James. Um, so this is something we're looking into, but um, it's still in its early stages, yeah. Right. This is a very big question. This is a big question, but what kind of quantity do you think is most interesting? If you, so you, you are talking about so a, a goes to B yes. by some kind of stochastic map or some unitary transformation or such time evolution. So in that case, do you want to do you think it's a I mean correlation between A and B subsystem correlation or is it interesting? Or do you think some, some other quantities? Uh, so in particular, do you think some kind of, I mean, entanglement, like structure still exists for this time-like separated region? It's quite, I mean, usually, of course, we define entanglement in space-like separated region. Yeah, so there, I just want to know some of your intuition from. Yeah, so, so there's some calculations that suggest, um, you know, these kinds of mathematical objects, depending on which state over time you can construct, you can sometimes compute, um, uh, uh, you can look at, for instance, the eigenvalues of the thing that you get. And with the proposals, you don't always get um, positive eigenvalues. So you don't always get a density matrix. And then, you know, we want to understand what, what can those um, eigenvalues mean. And in some contexts, like in the Jordan um, state over time function, you can get negative eigenvalues that do keep track of this temporal correlations between the initial and the final state, which is what we sort of expect because there's a dependence in time uh, uh, through, through the initial and final state. And interestingly, if you add enough noise to the channel or to your state, um, that sort of washes out that temporal information and then the eigenvalues eventually become positive. So there is some information there. And, and part of our current work is sort of really trying to identify um, how, to, how to quantify that more concretely. So thank you for the question. Any other questions or comments? If not, let's thank the speaker again.